modern website security implementations are nice but not good enough. Most people secure their websites by hashing passwords and using JWT token in order to prevent access to the website and the API, but a lot of them forget something which is very important. And by doing it, they leave their website open to a side channel attack, which a skilled hacker can exploit easily. Today, I am going to show you how you can fix this security flaw and how a hacker can exploit it from his point of view. Here we have our login page and we can also register. So everything is okay because that once we register, take a look. Now the password is being hashed inside of the database. So we can just select all from users. And here is our new user. So this method is a modern web security method because that you cannot save plain passwords into the database, right? So we are using a modern web authentication method. And now I will go to the code which is responsible for doing it. It is inside of the authentication controller. And as you can see, this code is responsible for registering users. All what we do here is hashing the user password and then storing the hashed password into the database. And here, whenever someone is trying to log in, there is a comparison between the requested password and the hashed password, which is already inside the database. If there is a match between the two passwords, it means that the user is going to get a JWT token. So it seems quite legit. The user logs in and then he gets a token. And in order to access our web application, he needs to specify a token. Without a token, he will not be capable of going into any of our API routes. So it means that in some way, our website is secured. Secured, but not secured enough. And now I can show you how a skilled hacker can exploit this code. Okay, and now let's try to log in with a random user. So for example, we can just call it random underscore user. And then we can just call it random password. So I will change it to random password and I will copy it and use this thing as a password. And of course, we don't have any user which has those credentials. And now let's do sign in. And here a skilled hacker can take a look at the API request. So now let's type it again and let's change it from random user to password. I will call it random password and use it as the password. And now let's take a look at the API request. As you can see, this is our request. So let's go and write our API URL for authentication, which is this. And now let's take a look at the payload. So this is our request body. This is all what we sent into the backend server from our client. And if we go back to our authentication code, we know that what is happening under the hood is that we check if the user exists, first of all. And then we compare the passwords. We know that if we log in and the user doesn't exist, we will get an error. And we know that if the user exists, there will be a comparison between the passwords and it means that we will move to the second stage. So a skilled hacker can try to log in with all kinds of usernames and see what username takes the most time to get a response. So let's say that I am trying to log in with all kinds of names. So for example, I have a list of certain names here. All of those are random names, but I know that admin exists. So for admin, we will move to the second stage. And because of that, it will take much more time to get a response from the API in comparison to the other users, which do not even exist. So let's do DT in order to display the tables. We can do select all from users again. And as you can see, admin exists. And because of that, the time it is going to take for us to get a response for the user admin is going to be higher than the average time it takes for other users with different names.
So let's go and try to make a code which is going to emphasize it. So I can now import the request library and also I will import the time library in order to measure how much time it is going for us to get a response from the API and I will make a function which is called HTTP and this function is going to accept username as a parameter and now I will use try and accept just so that if there is an error we will throw an exception accept exception as error and then I will print the error so first of all I will also import all the usernames we have so I can import our list and then we will iterate over this list and use our function for each username and now I can start building the request structure for example body as we can see here the request body is this we have the username key and now the username is going to be the username we specify in our parameter and the second key is going to be the password key okay and the password is going to stay the same i will just call it random password okay it seems like we are all set and now we can move on and send our response so i can do response request dot post we make a post request and i can specify the url for our authentication this is our api route and now i will specify the data json and now i can specify our request body this is the data we are going to send and let's take a look okay and now we can do this print let's do it like this sorry there is a small mistake uh, the time it takes for user and now i will specify the username is and now i will specify the response time so let's do start time equals time dot time I think we can call it like this and then I will do end time equals time dot time as well and now I will have a variable which is called total time and this variable will show us how much time it took for us from the start to get a response from our API so I can do end time minus start time and I can specify the total time here okay so let's take a look and see if everything is okay the time it takes for using username is okay and we can even maybe specify the status code status code is okay and now we can specify the response status code and also the response text why not okay let's take a look it seems like we're quite good everything is in its place and now let's iterate here i should call it usernames uh, for username in usernames i should call our function and use a name as a parameter so i can do username let's take a look and to me it seems like we're quite ready now let's open a second terminal in order to execute this call. Okay, so there is a small typo. We should call our time function like this with brackets. And now let's try to run our code. And as you can see, here are our results. And let's see the time it takes for admin. So I will try to make it bigger. And the time it takes for admin is much higher than the other times it takes for other users. So as you can see, because that admin exists in our web application, it takes a lot of time for admin because that in our backend, once we specify admin, we move to the second part. And when we use users which don't exist, we don't move to the second part. So a hacker can just specify a lot of names and see what kind of names have the higher response time. 
and based on that he can know what users exist and what not. This thing is a side channel attack because that a hacker shouldn't know what users exist because that otherwise he can make a brute force. For example, once he knows that admin exists, he can make a brute force and try to specify random passwords in order to log in into admin. So this is a side channel attack which modern implementations in most cases don't cover or forget to cover. Okay, so let's now take a look at the fixed code. As you can see, we have our fake password here and then we initialize a fake user as you can see here. And what we do is this, we take a look at the database and search for the specified user. Okay, and if we found the user, uh, we basically override our fake user and if not, we don't. But the most key point thing is this. No matter what, if the user exists or doesn't exist, we still do our conversion. So no matter whether user exists or not, we still move to stage number two. And no matter what, now once we run our script, we can see that the results are going to be similar to anyone regardless if the user exists or not. So, oh, my bad, let's do, where is our script? So I can do script.py and I should run it. So Python script.py. And now as you can see, the timing is quite the same for all users, no matter whether the user exists or not, we always move to stage number two which is our bcrypt compare function. So take a look at the results again. The timing is quite similar for everyone.